Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So today is the first video of a new playlist on DBT. In this playlist, we will go from zero to basics and then advanced features of the DBT. Now, uh, in this video, we will set up a new account on the DBT cloud and then we will set up a new project. Uh, there are two ways you can use dbt and learn dbt first way is that you can install it into your local system and then use all the features the second way is that you can create an account on dbt cloud and then use all the features from there my preferred way will be that you create an account on dbt cloud and then use the features from there uh, two reasons for that are that first it is for free you can create a free account and you can set up a free project on dbt cloud Second, most of the organizations are using DBT Cloud for development purpose. So it is always good to use the same environment which you are actually going to work upon when you enter in a project. So the prerequisite uh, to set up the project in DBT account are that you need to have an active Snowflake account and you need to have a GitHub account. So let us go and start this tutorial. So as you can see that I already have a Snowflake account here and I have run few commands here just to give you a background though you can use your account admin user for this tutorial but it is always good to have a dedicated user and role for ETL purpose or ELT purposes so here I am quickly simply creating a new database which is analytics I am creating three schemas within it raw STG and reporting I am creating a new warehouse which will be used by the dbt name dbt underscore warehouse creating a new role dbt underscore role and a new user dbt underscore user so i will be configuring these dbt underscore role user and warehouse in my dbt account then here i am simply assigning the dbt role to dbt user and i am giving usage access on dbt warehouse to dbt role and these are nothing but some usage grants on database and corresponding schemas to dbt role and then here I am simply creating all the SFTP uh, TPCH schema tables into my raw schema of the analytics database. So this is a simple setup. I will be pasting this script into the description or comments of this video. Here you can see that I already have a GitHub account created and I already have a dbt tutorial repository inside my GitHub account. If you want to create a new repository, you can click on this new and then create a new repository. Uh, why this github account is needed that uh, whenever a job is created into dbt cloud account at runtime it pulls the latest code from the attached code repository and then executes that code so for that purpose we need to have a git github account or a code repository account beforehand we create the project itself so this github account will be used in our case so to create a github account you can simply go to getdbt.com sign up page here you can provide your email other information and then simply create account once you create account it will send an email confirmation or confirmation to your email with which you are registering you need to go there log into your email and then confirm your email once you confirm you will be inside the dbt so once you are inside the dbt account i have already registered this is a brand new account so you will be asked to create a new project and if you are not asked you can simply go to this gearbox and then account settings and here projects you can see right now i do not have any project created uh, the limitation for the free account is that you can only create one project so by clicking the new project we can give our name let us give the analytics name to the project and then continue so here it is asking whether you already have any data warehouse data platform so we will be completing this tutorial with snowflake so let us pick that next in the next step it is basically asking us to configure our snowflake account so it needs our dbt account so we can go here into our snowflake data warehouse here in this section I can copy my account identifier and I can give this that account identifier here always remember that if you are copying it account identifier from your snowflakes account you need to replace this dot with hyphen 
the data name this is the database which we created so it will be analytics warehouse will be dbt underscore warehouse role will be dbt underscore role next it is asking what will be the authentication method so either you can use key pair or username password authentication for this tutorial we will be using username and password authentic authentication so our username will be dbt underscore user and password which we given during creation of the user so it is this one this i will be i would always want to log into raw schema so once you have given all the details you can come here and simply test the connection if everything all the details are fine then it will give you a success message if some of the details are not right then it will fail here basically so here you can see that my test has been completed and i am successfully able to test my connection and log into snowflake account now we can click next the next step is that we need to connect to a code repository so in our case we will be using github so once you click on the github it will ask you to connect with your github account so i am already logged into my github account if you are not it, you will be asked to log in so if we click on connect github account it will take me to my github account and it will ask me to authorize the dbt cloud to connect with my github account so we can click on authorize dbt cloud so after authorization you will be sent back to this page here you need to go to github again and configure github integration you need to click this again now you will be redirected to your github page here you need to provide the access to the repositories so we are going to give access only to a particular repository we need to select our repository here right now we only have one dbt underscore tutorial so we will select this repository and we will click on install so once that step is done you will be again redirected here here now you can see that our github account is linked and it is also our dbt underscore tutorial repository has also been linked you can click on this once you click on this it will be configured yes so our project is ready it is saying so now we can confirm it again if we go to account settings once again projects now we see this analytics project is available available here and now you can see if you click on this in the right pane you will see that the project name is analytics the repository with, with which it is connected to is dbt underscore tutorial connection is snowflake type and all the information are here so now we can go to develop section for first time it may take few minutes so here you can see that our setup has been completed at the background and it is asking basically that uh, your setup is completed and you can check it now so let's go ahead show me around so by the end of this uh, tutorial you will be set up to start your dbt project execute your first dbt command materialize two models in your data warehouse so it is basically giving us some sample models already created uh, and then click here to initialize your project so ba basically it is giving us a go around tutorial on various sections of this interface run your first command dbt run so dbt run is the command to execute any dbt model click here to expand the command bar so here this is the command bar here we will be executing all of our dbt models and this is the pane to show the execution log we need to initialize our project first so once you click on initializing your project it gives you various folder structures uh, in the next video we will see what are the importance of these 
folder structure and because uh, you can always configure your dbt project.yml based on this folder structure here our code repository is also linked right now we are linked with the main branch so dbt underscore project dot yml is the main file it you can consider it a global environment setup file so whatever configurations you set up here those work as global environment or global variables across all the directory structures so in the next tutorial we will learn about setting up the environment and creating our first model and execution of the first model so this is the end of this video tutorial thank you for watching guys if you find this video helpful please like it and subscribe to my channel see you in the next video